Hey there, so we're looking at developing your solution. This is a pretty long video um, just because I actually have set it up, sort of, um, excuse my handwriting um, on the screen, to show you how you should be setting it up. If you need additional paper, remember to add that to your um, report. So developing your solution, you need to follow your plan. So here's the information that I've included from the last slide, and I'm going to follow this as if I was doing it. So. I would keep that on a piece of paper as separate. Um, you'll see that I've kind of numbered it the same way. Before I move on though, this is what how you're being assessed on. So things like use of complex procedures. So if you are like Abby's, how you do Abby would be um, how you reach um, complex procedures to reach an accurate solution. So making sure that you've got Abby's stuff working for, um, you're showing Abby's uh, scores and how you work them out. Uh, uh, discerning application just means a good judgment of mathematical concepts. So that's the thing of where you're using mean, median, mode, and range. So measures the center and spread to compare um, data to, say, your um, whole team and then making that decision based on that. And if you're making some errors, then that's obviously there. And if you're not making errors, then you're up in this one here because um, it's reaching an accurate solution. Okay. And so this one here, making sure that you've got Abby stuff included um, with those ones and all your calculations are correct. And then this one here is when we're making a comparison to make a decision. If you're aiming for this and you don't get there, at least you'll fall somewhere in this category because you will be doing something that's a bit more than just simple and um, simple procedures. So if you see here, so that's the ICMG, let's move on to the solution. So I'm following my plan. So the first thing I've done is like collect play data. So I was like, the scores, five players, eight games were collected by, so however I collected it. So you might say by random distribution or random number generator, um, researching it. You might be an avid cricket player, so yours might be about number of runs from players. And then you need to go to the next one. So determining Abby's score. So this is the from directly from your stimulus. So you would actually just have like Abby's score is mean of this, that's her range is this. Um, show how you scored it and then present Abby's data in a table like this. Then the third thing you're going to do is work out like the statistics for each player. So now you can see here I've got it like determine the stats for each player. That's the title of the section I'm doing. I work out mean. So if you wanted to, you could have that in a different color. Um, and then you'll see mean was calculated for the six players, for example. Now I provide one example. That's shyer from the um, example in your stimulus. And this was repeated with the five other players and recorded in table two. Note, I do not have any other FSAs here. But... I know that you are going to do them and that's where you can use your communication skills to not have to duplicate on things. If you want to do that, by all means, go for it. But just saying, work smarter, not harder. All right, uh, median. So I show how I work out the calculation for median and lo and behold, repeating. There was This was repeated for the other five players recorded in table two. So now table two has the mean data and the median data for the six players. The mode was identified again. Now it's got that range. So four points of data, four points of data for six players. That gives me 24 points. And then the comparison of the player's statistics. Now you can see that this is the one that we did in class the other day as a comparison. Notice that I've got the name, mean, median, mode, range. There's my five players. And don't forget you would have in your case, Abby and her numbers. Her numbers there, um, whatever they are. Then you would have determining your most valuable player. Now, I would strongly suggest that you, at some point, somewhere in your data, put the whole team. And this would be the best place to put it. Miss R recommend one stem and leaf for the whole team. This will help you with collecting or determining the team's median and mode. It can also help you with the mean. Excuse that, I'm running on the edge of the uh, 
stylus. So I would recommend, strongly recommend, that you at least construct one stem and leaf plot. If you actually have a look at the stimulus and the other parts of your task sheet, it does say that you should do that. Um, it's just that we're making little adjustments here. So you've got the whole team um, data was analysed. So again, I'm not just slapping things into my report. I actually explain things. Um, was you know compared to individuals to the team's performance, the team's data was displayed in the stem and leaf plot. Figure one. So this would be my figure one. The only thing I haven't done is written underneath it. So so if you're ever unsure, table top. Remember the tabletop, you eat on the top of the table. That's where you put the caption and then figures, it's below. Process of elimination. Figure one, stem and leaf for whole team uh, point scored data or whatever data you, that you've collected. So uh, someone was talking about like the least amount of mistakes or something like that, whatever. This is your assignment. That's where you get to add your own flavor. So, and then I would say the whole team, mean, median, motor were calculated. Oh, and I should also have range there as well. So let's, um, and range calculated. And the players uh, were compared to the team's performance to determine the most valuable. Now, you'll see that I have ended it there because that is up to you now. How are you going to make this discerning? Are you going to just compare numbers or are you going to work out the difference of things? Because guess what? That is a type of statistics that you can use. Um, that is your choice. So you need to make that decision as a, a person and how you're going to do that. Because remember, that's your um, indicator for achievement standard. So like, are you doing it to a high level and thinking about all aspects of the problem solving or are you just going to consider like, okay, I've worked out the mean for one person. Here's a team. Compare the numbers and voila. There. One's higher, one's lower. So essentially that is your solution. There is a lot there to remember. So, um, yep, range. And then the last thing is determining that. Make sure though that you have some sort of final statement. Like, therefore, once you've done all your calculations, so calculations... And evidence on how you made your decision. Oop, for the most valuable player, um, MVP, then you need to be on the team is whoever you've picked. Okay, so then you would then, and then once you've got that, that's when you can lead into your evaluation of like, why are they the most valuable person on the team? So, because then you're explaining your process of how you made that decision, because that's what evaluating and verifying means. Okay, righto, that's everything. Done that pretty well and concisely. So remember, pause, rewind if you're unsure at where you need to be. All right, stay awesome. Almost there.